Hello and welcome to a day in 15 minutes UPSC prelims daily current affairs. Today's topics for discussion are real time train information system, protocol on inland water transit and trade, then NAVIC, economic outlook for Southeast Asia, China and India, Red Atlas action um, plan map. So coming to the first topic real time train information system RTIS. So uh, this is in uh, news because uh, the 500 passenger trains are going to get this uh, ISRO uh, enabled uh, GPS system. So this is basically a system that has been used for automatic transmission of uh, speed and movement of trains to a central control system office. So this will actually improve the train controlling functions. So this has been developed by two uh, associations that is one is SIRE, SIRE Center for Railway Information Systems and they made it with the help of Indian Space Research Organization ISRO and Airport Authority of India's Gagan. Gagan is basically global positioning system aided uh, geo augmented navigation. Okay, so uh, that is GPS aided geo augmented navigation is uh, Gagan. So basically it is developed by SIRE. ISRO Airport Authority of India's Gagan. Okay. And for now, the information gathered, it has been used for internal purposes. So, this has an outer uh, outdoor unit uh, over the locomotive roof top that is called as uh, RMT, that is Rail MMS Terminal. It comprises of a mobile service, satellite service, uh, that is a transceiver uh, module, and there is a GPS receiver and also an uh, antenna. And also there is an indoor unit just like the outdoor unit. It is called as IRN or Indian Rail Navigator. Uh, it is placed in the locomotive ca cabin itself. It has a display processing uh, engine. It has an integrated communication module and also a power management unit. Okay, so basically the communication is done through GPS reception and also through, uh, also through the 4G modules. Okay, now we will talk about what Gagan is. Okay, Gagan I have already told you GPS aided geo augmented navigation. So, this is a satellite based augmentation system. It is for the uh, Indian airspace and uh, it was developed by ISRO and Airport Authority of India. So, this particular system it relies on ISRO's GSAT satellite for information. So, the system is interoperable with other uh, international uh, systems like US have US WAS then uh, um, Europe has EGNOS and Japanese has MSAS. So they work uh, just like the other international system also. And it is primarily meant for aviation. Okay, So it will provide benefits beyond aviation to other user segments like intelligence transportation, then maritime, then it is used in highways, railways, even for surveying. Okay, and uh, it is used in telecom industries, personal users of uh, the position uh, location applications also use this particular Gagan. Okay, the next topic is protocol on inland water transit and trade. So, this is in news because in line with the government's focus on improving connectivity to the northeastern part of India. So, they have started a ca cargo consignment with uh, that is sailing on the inland waterways from Haldia. Uh, to the Inland Waterway Authority of India Terminal at Pandu. Pandu is in Guwahati. So basically they are starting an inland waterway from Haldia to uh, Guwahati. Okay, that is why this is in news. So the voyage will be uh, uh, integrated inland water transport movement. It will be via the National uh, Waterway 1 that is River Ganga and then it passes through National Waterway 97 that is Sundarbans. Then it will cover Indo-Bangladesh Protocol IBP route and again it will reach uh, National Waterway 2 that is River Brahmaputra that will be the route and this is the first ever containerized cargo movement on this in, uh, inland water transport route. Okay, the latest route um, movement is aimed at providing a uh, you know a push towards the northeastern region's industrial development. So, they can actually open a many alternate route for transportation of uh, raw materials or finished goods. Okay, so uh, the protocol on inland water transit and uh, trade that has been uh, done between India and Bangladesh. Uh, it will actually uh, help them to mutually uh, reach beneficial agreement for the use of their waterways for the movement of goods. So the IBP route extends from uh, Kolkata as I already told you uh, to uh, Silgat in Assam uh, on river Brahmaputra and from Karimganj in Assam 
to river Barak. Barak is uh, national waterway number 6. Okay. So, two stretches of Bangladesh inland waterways that is Siraj Ganj to Daikhawa and Ashu Ganj to uh, Zaki Ganj uh, on IBP route will be developed by India. So, the important thing that you have to concentrate here is about the national waterways. You have to know which all national way waterway lies in which part of the country. So, national waterway 1, it connects Allahabad to Haldia that is through Ganga, Bhagiradi, Hooghly river system. We have national waterway 2 that is sa connecting Sadia to Dubri. Uh, the stretch is on the river Brahmaputra uh, that is in Assam. Then you have national waterway 3 that is connecting Kottapuram to Kollam stretch. It is through the West Coast Canal that is Chambakara uh, Canal and Udyoga Mandal Canal that is in Kerala. Then we have National Waterway 4. Uh, it is a stretch from Kakinada to Pondicherry. It will be through Godavari and Krishna River system. Then we have again National Waterway 5 if from connecting from Talchar to Paradeep in Odisha. That is via Brahmani River. That is the East Coast Canal, uh, Matai River and Mahanadi River Delta. And we have one more important one that is National Waterway 6. That is connecting from Lakhipur to Banga on River Barak. That is also again proposed, Assam uh, proposed it. Okay, so what is the role of Inland Waterway Authority of India? This is an initiative by government. It started in 1986. It is to regulate and develop inland waterway for uh, shipping as well as for navigation. So the body, it chiefly undertakes the development and maintenance project of the inland waterway transport, uh, the, the infrastructure of it and also they rely on uh, national waterways. So, it undertakes these projects through grants from the shipping ministry. Okay. And the headquarter is placed in Noida. Fine. The next topic is NAVIC, Navigation with Indian Constellation. So, um, this is in news because ISR, this uh, Na NAVIC is by ISRO. So, they are said to be commercialized by uh, Antrix. Antrix is a wing of uh, ISRO to commercialize all these uh, products made by them. So, NAVIC is an independent uh, regional navigation satellite system. It is designed to provide uh, uh, position information in the Indian region and 1500 kilometer around the Indian mainland. So, it is a regional system and so its constellation will consist of seven satellites. It is very important. Okay. Three of these satellites will be geostationary over the Indian Ocean and four will be geosynchronous. Okay. And this configuration that will ensure each satellite is being tracked by at least one of the 14 ground stations at any point of time. Okay. So, it is uh, uh, there is a high chance of them being visible from any point uh, in India. The system is expected to provide a position accuracy uh, better than 20 meter in the primary service area and it would uh, provide two type of services basically a standard positioning system that is called as SPS okay and it is available to everyone and there is a restricted uh, services provided to authorized users okay. The basic application is like disaster management or vehicle tracking fleet management, then integration with mobile phones, precision timing, mapping and uh, geodetic data capture, then there is terrestrial navigation aid for uh, uh, these hack, uh, sorry, hikers and uh, travelers. Then we, uh, we can also use it in visual and voice navigation for uh, drivers, okay. So, the global navigation system for other countries are basically Galileo for Europe, then we have GLONASS for Russia, then Beidou for China and uh, GPS for US, okay. So, and talking about Antrix Corporation Limitation uh, Limited, I have already told you it is only uh, owned by Government of India. It is a mini Ratna company and it is under the Department of Space and it is a commercial arm of ISRO. So, they actually promotes and commercialize uh, the products and services maintained or made by uh, Indian Space Program, okay. The next topic for discussion today is economic outlook for Southeast Asia, China and India. This is a news because OECD, you might be familiar with OECD, they released a report, uh, uh, they released their report economic outlook for Southeast Asia, China and India. So, in prelims point of view, you will be uh, getting a question on who releases economic outlook for 
south east asia china and india okay so uh, <clears throat> major findings i'll i'll brief the major findings in the report so india expected growth over next 5 years it is put uh, around 6.6% it is compared to 7.4% uh, of uh, the previous year and for southeast asia the growth is uh, uh, projected to be 4.9% over 2020 uh, to 2024 and it will be slightly down from 5% over the last year that is uh, 2000 uh, last 5 years that is um uh, the 2017 ending year and uh, china's expected growth over 2020 20 2024 shows a wider gap at 5.6% uh, down from 7.1% in uh, 2013 17 year and uh, this is a biannual publication it is on the regional economic growth development and uh, the regional integration it is published by oecd and it focuses on the economic conditions of uh, the uh, asean countries so the asean countries contain uh, brunei darussalam cambodia indonesia laos pdr then malaysia myanmar philippines singapore thailand and uh, vietnam so it also addresses relevant economic issues in china as well as in india so as to fully reflect the economic development in the region and it will also provide an update of the macroeconomic trends the challenges uh, the structural policy the thematic focus that a country focus on so what is oecd basically it is a international intergovernmental economic organization it has 34 members and it was formed in 1961 so uh, this is to stimulate the world trade and economic progress so these are made by high uh, income economy countries with a very high human development index so this is a speciality of oecd and india is one of the key partner of oecd oecd is also official united nation observer nation okay so that's all you have to know then there is a small current affairs capsule today red atlas action plan map so i'll briefly tell you what it is it is a first of its kind ready reckoner map it has been prepared by uh, the union ministry of earth sciences the the main function is to aid the government of tamil nadu in uh, flood mitigation in chennai so chennai we are facing this urban floods so the atlas is aimed at flood mitigation preparedness programs operations and management aspects there is something called as sea flows coastal flood warning uh, system app sea flow is uh, chennai's complete web gis uh, uh, based a decision support system and also it can be used for both mitigating the planning operations before the flooding as well as in real time to actually do the relief work okay so uh, that's all for today guys i hope you enjoyed the session if you have any queries or doubts please let me know in the comment section that that's all for today thank you so much good night so please like share and subscribe to our channel for more videos follow our website neoiascap.com for the detailed content and monthly prelims digest also join our current affairs exclusive test series through the website and finally participate in the daily current affairs prelims infotainment queues at our telegram channel that is neoias prelims at 9:30 pm